So peace, peace, peace. Peace, family. Peace, friends. Peace to all my enemies out there. This is the Hood Mystic representing www.hoodmystic.com. And today we're talking about the viral video, Donald Glover's This is America, and the psychological interpretation of the video, not the social conscious interpretation. There's a million of those on YouTube. Um, but this is has less to do with the social construct, but more to do with the spiritual, psychological ramifications and kind of the things you possibly could have missed or just information that you kind of haven't been privy to. So I'm going to start this video with referencing Ayn Rand. Um, this She put out a book entitled Atlas Shrugged. Um, Atlas Shrugged is a story about... Um, a world, a dystopian future. So this book was written in the past, but I think it's interesting how it's relative to this video and to actually what's happening today. So, and at, can you turn that down? And Atlas Shrugged, and Atlas Shrugged, there was uh, a guy named John Gate, and there was like a town or a city, and there was this big factory called the 20th century motor company and in this factory there was like defective automobile parts or what you could say in the video you see childish gambino or donald glover in a factory with a bunch of old cars and like i was <laughs> like i was looking at these cars like what are these cars here for because i know these cars are significant but it just really didn't make sense only when you factor in atlas shrugged in my personal opinion do you get a full picture of what this video is actually speaking to and it's probably more important than what you actually think it is generally we think that the problem is something outside of us that is causing this world to decay but generally the outside world is not the problem the problem is us so generally what are you doing to push forward the world so generally the people with the talent the gods and things of that nature like people like Donald Glover and people like Beyonce, people like Jay-Z, like these are quote unquote, the people that push the envelope for it, as to say, but you know, these people do not get the credit success or the finances that they truly deserve. When you speak about, you know, your most famous artists, like anybody say Jay-Z and Beyonce, they got a billion dollars. Do you now, how much money did they create for somebody else who like, record company that they work for if they have a billion then they must have made whoever that they work for a trillion dollars at least by now when you figure in all of the clothes all of the movies all of the cds and everything that is associated with beyonce and jay-z um and donald glover like you know he does he's a writer a actor a producer you know super talented um a comedian a dj you know a singer you know all of these things he makes movies he makes tv shows everything is provocative now this is his talent this is his vision but he won't receive much of the profits of that so this happened for so long in this world that and I'm talking about Atlas Shrugged now. This happened for so long in this world that the artists and the forward thinkers, they said, fuck it. You know, we're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to shuck and jive. We're not going to dance any longer. So there was like a secret plot, like people were disappearing in the town. And he was like, and the main character was like, where is everybody going? Like, why is everybody disappearing? Well, what was actually happening under the surface was that the the business owners, they were the independent, they were striking. They weren't disappearing. They were just like, you know, we're just going to stop doing shit because we just don't want to do it no more. So when that happened, anarchy, like there was looters and moochers looters were the people that were just like will rob you take your money and then the moochers would be like you know being nice to you and then like you know what i'm saying you wake up 
all your furniture gone. Shit like that. Like, it was a whole bunch of crazy stuff happening because the intellectuals, the smart people just stopped being smart because they realized that when they first started, when they first started the 20th Century Motor Company, there was an agreement that, you know, everybody was going to be taken care of. So it was this idea of the quote unquote public as opposed to the idea of the individual. The individual was like eliminated over time and everything was just about the public. Now, this seems good in theory, but generally when you talk about the public, what are we actually talking about? It's just a vague concept now that like now you just have a whole amount of people that you just ignore at this point because you can't really deal with their issues. So the children that are on welfare or the children that are struggling with mental illness and things of that nature, like all of the things that's happening in the community, we're not really dealing with it. So generally we'll say, you know, forget that and then just focus on dancing and having a good time because generally we can't really solve the problems of the world. And that speaks to Atlas Shrugged. Atlas is a Greek god, a titan that was overthrown by the Olympians. So all of the titans had different chores that had to, that they had to take care of. Atlas, his chore was to carry the world on his shoulders. And so he, his only, his only job was to carry the world on his shoulders. So no matter how hard it was or how difficult it was, that's what he had to do. So generally, when you look at these stars, you put so much responsibility. If Beyonce just came out and just says something that you didn't agree with, she would be crucified. So she had to choose her words carefully and be this type of person. But if you take a step back and you really look at these people as individuals and what they actually mean and what they stand for, then you then you will see that generally we put too much emphasis on them and what they're actually doing. And we're not taking responsibility for what we can actually do to bring enlightenment awareness to, you know, the greater causes. Generally, we're just waiting for Beyonce to tell us that we weren't <laughs> slaves or whatever the case may be. We're looking Looking for validation from these stars and generally they can't really do anything for us it's all about us and the the new left is a concept that i think has been re-triggered with the concept of the movie get out and so what we have now is just a continuation from the bar that was set with get out and really the calling out of the left way of thinking because when you think of the democratic system the democratic system is all about the public but if you do your research on what exactly is the public then it the public doesn't exist we are all just a collection of individuals so the concept of public school needs to further be examined so this video is really a snapshot on the public school system and an indictment not on the children but on the parents <laughs> but we'll get into that so this video takes place in a warehouse now, if you just look at the setting of the video and see a warehouse, then you won't actually get what he's trying to say with the setting. The setting is probably the most important piece to this video to kind of give you a clue as to what he's actually trying to explain or what he's actually trying to show to people through his art. Now, if you study any sovereignty or nationalist movements, they will break down the social security card and the birth certificate and how it is just like a tool that is being used to actually manipulate and control you. Uh, the birth certificate and the social security card is really known as what is called a warehouse receipt. And a warehouse receipt is just a way for the government to keep track of his property. Generally, uh, human beings aren't really like really free human beings in this country based on the laws and codes. We're really property. So for having a video setting in the warehouse is really showing you what really goes on in this warehouse, because generally 
the reason why I say that is because the, the video starts off with the black screen and the white letters called This is America. So the next scene is this scene right here, the warehouse. So like, let's follow me real quick. This is America warehouse so the the warehouse is america so this is just an analogy that we have to really take seriously and we have to really stop for a second and really question our motives where are we going what's actually happening in our world ultimately if we don't question or ask these questions then generally we are not really as woke as we claim to be so generally this stay woke movement and this new left movement is really trying to really wake people up to the mind control or really the matrix type illusion energy that's been put out into this existence like ever since we were born we were born into this warehouse Ultimately, we never fully had a choice to make a decision to say, you know what, school is bullshit, even though we probably have felt it at one time or another being in school like, you know, I really don't like this. I really wish I didn't have to come here, but generally I'm here to go. Now, there's people who go to school and thrive and really like going to school, and I don't feel that there's a problem with that, but it's generally not a thing that you should force all people to get on board with um, because generally just look at what has happened in our society based on the public school system. But back to the warehouse, the warehouse and the warehouse receipt is really talking about if you don't really understand that, you know, that you live vicariously through a piece of paper and that piece of paper, that birth certificate and the marriage certificate or the social security number or social security card, that is the real you. When you look at your name, when you get mail and your name is in all caps, that is what is called the straw man. And the real person is the real you. So generally when they put you in jail or they do things to you, they can't really do anything to you because you're a human living soul. Now you are contraband in a sense. They used to call black people contraband. Look it up. Contraband is a term where if I got caught with contraband, let's say I had like a crack pipe on, I was kicking it with Whitney Houston and I had a crack pipe on me, then that's contraband, meaning I'm not supposed to have that contraband because that contraband is illegal. Now, when, when you got to understand that slavery is illegal, it, it's always been illegal, but it has, <laughs> you know, people did illegal shit and the same way, like selling drugs is illegal. But do you think pe that stops people from selling drugs? So generally, when you had slaves and you had people like that, that was considered contraband because you really, really wasn't supposed to have it. And so when you when you think that you are this African-American or this black person, you've really been told that and you have really not really awaken to your soul. Your soul is not African American. Your soul is not black. Your soul is not, you know, indigenous. Your soul is not none of this. Your soul just is. And this is what actually is the truth. But generally you wouldn't say that, or you wouldn't feel that because you haven't do the knowledge. So it's important that, you know, you do the research and you do the knowledge because the thing about the sovereignty movement and I'll move forward. The thing about the sovereignty movement and the nationality movement is that you cannot pay for it. So when you pay these people for these packages or to get you sovereign or nationalize you, and then you're checked on it and you don't know nothing about what you signed up for, then you're committing a fraud essentially. Now, if you do your research and know the verbiage and you know the legalese, then that binds you because your word is bond, not your money. <laughs> but we're going to talk about it. So in the, in that scene, the opening scene, there is a throne or a chair sitting in the middle and a guitar sitting in there. And that is a shot to the Bible. Um, because Revelations chapter seven, verse 17, there is speaking to for the lamb who is this 
is in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of waters of life and will and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. That's a dualistic point of view, which is taken from Psalms 49, 14, which is basically the same verse, just remix. So the first verse is in Psalm and David is known to play the lyre, which is relative to the guitar. And so David and Jesus and, you know, the lamb, all of these things are synonymous with your soul. So let's get out of the religious talk and really deal with the psychology. So like sheep, they must die and death will be their ship shepherd. Honest people will rule over them in the morning. Their bodies will rot in a grave far from home. So your body rotting in the grave far from home. That's like the physical, your physical life will never leave the earth, but home is not the physical life. So if your body will rot in a grave far from home, your spirit will be at home, like, you know, whatever. So when you actually die, you don't actually like, it's not game over, like never to be seen again. You actually transmute that energy and just go on to your next phase of life. So understanding this concept, this is the concept that the revolutionaries had in the Haitian revolution. The reason why they fought so fearlessly and so warlike, because they understood that when I die, I don't actually die. I'm actually freeing myself from this physical life. Like, so generally we think that by being slaves, we're doing ourselves a, a good justice because at least we're not dead. But honestly, in spiritual circles, when you actually die, that's the freedom. But we'll talk about that as well. So generally, Psalms verse forty, chapter forty nine, verse fourteen speaks to how people naturally plan a long life. They map out their estates. They they act as if their house. They try to have lineages. So my, I want my children's children to live in this house. And like you go to Detroit. And where it was once 2 million people is now 700,000 people. And those 130,000 houses are just abandoned. So what was the point of creating that, you know, family, quote unquote, lineage and all of that? And that shit is like dilapidated. So like, you know, these concepts that we hold as human beings don't really serve us long term, short term, no term. They really are an allusion to our senses. But understanding that death is a good thing because it's what we're trying to kill is old ideas. Okay. We're not trying to kill our body. We're trying to kill our old ideas and we're trying to tap into our soul. And so I think the video is speaking to that. This is a nod to Plato and Socrates. Sorry to say it's not a nod to Trayvon Martin. Um, even though the dude kind of looks like him, the dude looks more like Socrates, believe it or not, the black Socrates, but Socrates, um, was a philosopher in Greece and Plato was his student. And so Plato shooting Socrates, um, some Plato, Socrates had to commit suicide at a point in time. That was his. That was his sentence for, you know, waking people up, so to say. Socrates was telling people about the soul, like, you know, this government, they lying to you. You got all the power and they like, yo, we can't have Socrates out here. You got to go. And so when Socrates died, Plato took over, but Socrates never really fully died. Um, he actually lived through Plato's work, then he lived through Aristotle's work, then he lived through Alexander the Greek. And now when you look at the world and how it's formed and the powers that be, it all stems from Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, Alexander the Greek, so forth and so on. From Julius Caesar down to Nero, down to Barack Obama. So generally it's just the lineage of student, teacher teacher, student, student becomes a teacher. So this is what is actually being played out. But Childish Gambino decides, you know what? I'm gonna kill Socrates myself. And generally why I say that, like, why am I saying that this is an ode to Socrates? Well, so in, in the legend of Socrates, when he passes away, 
Socrates mentions to his followers as he's passing away, he has that same drab over his face. He takes the drab off and he says, Credo, I owe a cock to Asclepius. Will you remember to pay the debt? And that's a nod to Asclepius, the Greek god of healing, um, prophecy, and truth. And so the cock is an offering, or the cock is not like a cock, but a chicken. <laughs> I owe a chicken to Asclepius like an offering, a sacrifice to Asclepius for truth, prophecy, and healing. So what are we actually healing? We're not trying to heal the physical body right now. We're trying to heal the mind. So... When Socrates uncovers his head, he tells Credo, um, give Asclepius a cock, because when you sacrifice to the god, it's like saying thank you. And, and Socrates was saying thank you to Asclepius because he didn't know, he knew that he wasn't dying. He knew that he would live on through his work and through his, his students. And he did what he had to do, and now he was free. And he was actually resurrecting himself. And and in, in the video, the guy who Childish Gambino shoots at the beginning of the video, towards the end of the video, he's right back <laughs> playing a guitar like he never got shot. So that really speaks to the resurrection of Socrates and the cock to Asclepius. <gasps> well, what do you know? <laughs> if you didn't pay attention, you wouldn't have seen it because he's doing all these fancy dance moves and things of that nature. You got two chickens in the background um, as really an offering why everything is going on. So in the video, you got a lot going on. What really is going on is that you have a riot, you have anarchy, you have looting, you have cops and people running. And that's just more of the nod to Atlas Shrugged and the scenery and the depictions that was happening there with the looters and the moochers. But look up Atlas Shrugged. If you look up the Wikipedia page of Atlas Shrugged, you will understand this video. That's just a life hack. But Back to that resurrection. The soul is entirely fastened and welded to the body and is compelled to regard realities through the body as through prison bars. So that's a nod to what Kanye was saying when he said slavery was a choice. But if you watch the full interview, he's, he goes on to say, I don't really mean slavery. I, I mean like prison, like because prison is something that we can all understand. There's black people in prison. There's white people in prison. There's women in prison. There's Chinese people in prison. There's everybody's in prison. So we can all understand the concept of prison. When you say slavery, then they kind of be just like, you know, just this black thing. But really, this is a human condition and a human problem that I really I don't know if he was speaking to it. He could have just been making a cool video. And I'm just looking way too deep into this shit. Understand that everything I say is controvertible. Um, it's just really to incite discussion or incite thoughts. And generally, you may know a lot about this information, but generally, there are more people who do not know about this information because generally, what have they been doing for the past seven years? They've been doing a shoot, they've been doing a stanky leg, they've been doing the Millie Rock, and all of this shit. And they have not been paying attention to what's been going on. So, in the midst of doing a shoot in the stanky leg he's showing you what's actually happened the school to prison pipeline that's a real thing that happens with black people and so when ann rain spoke about this in 1971 how is she gonna know because at that point in time in 1971 the thing 0.1 of people were went to jail you went to jail when you did messed up stuff 99.9% .9 of the population was not in prison. But post-1971, as you can look at that graph, that shit just went all out the window. And so generally, you have to look at the connection. What is the connection between all of these people going to prison and <laughs> where are they coming from? Well, all of these people are coming from the public school system and i need to say this real quick when umar johnson came out and he was dropping it like 2008 2009 i was like really feeling what he was saying because what he's saying it what he said and what he used to talk about it really spoke to me because i went through you know 
the ADHD and getting Ritalin when I was in school and things of that nature to kind of calm me down and make me, you know, a, a, a student and things of that nature. So I've been through that. So I can understand. And believe it or not, I've been to prison. Now, when I tell people I've been to prison, they be like, you went to prison? And I then I need to start telling people like when I went to prison, it wasn't a whole bunch of um, Debo's in that joint. It was some nerds in there. It was people who wanted to go home. It was all types of personalities in prison. And the only thing that we had in common is that we all had went to public school generally. Now, that's to say that the, the crime that's being committed in this in this world is not done by the people that are going to penitentiary. People the people who are running the penitentiary are the people that's doing the crime, but you wouldn't never know that because the narrative doesn't speak to that. So in this video with these kids dancing in the midst of living in a warehouse, they are oblivious to the fact that, you know, don't nobody give a shit about them. Um, there's a concept in Anne Rain's book, Compra Chico, where these guys would take children they would kidnap children and from an early age they would start to mutilate them and deform them and so as they grew up they didn't necessarily know that their deformities and their afflictions were due to these compra chicos and so the compra chicos were always there like their quote-unquote fathers and things of that nature so they never really know that these person this person is the one that mutilated me and having me in this freak show like i was born perfect but this guy was doing all types of weird stuff to my face and my body so like those freak shows back in the days and all those children that they those a lot of those people wasn't born like that a lot of those people were mutilated and deformed in that way at a really young age and so when they grew up they thinking that well shit so we have black men and black boys that grow up thinking like, I'm supposed to be a gangster. I'm supposed to like strippers. I'm supposed to make it rain. I'm supposed to be this. I'm supposed to be that. But you don't necessarily know where that motive came from or how that even that vision of who you were supposed to be as a black man was even created based upon you being trapped in his warehouse called America. This is America. And so in his interview childish gambino his interview to esquire he spoke on um a marvin gay quote and nod to marvin gay's song save the children if you never heard save the children i suggest you listen to it it's just like a real melodic groove and like marvin gay he start off like he don't start off singing it's like a spoken word poem like I always resonated with that song, but the quote that um, Childish Gambino takes from it, because you got to understand, he's a father now. He, he has two children, so when you have children, you start to think about their future, and you generally start to examine your past life and your experience with school, and so you generally want to break those chains, so I feel him on that. But Marvin Gaye says, when I look to the world, it fills me with sorrow. Little children today are really going to suffer tomorrow. Now, he said this in 1971. I'm going to repeat that because you like understand. In 1971, Marvin Gaye looked at the world and said, when I look at the world, it fills me with sorrow. Little children today are really going to suffer tomorrow. And so... If that's not some prophetic, <laughs> that's super prophetic to me. And so Childish Gambino, when talking about his new album in relation to this song, he's really channeling Marvin Gaye, Stephen Wa Stevie Wonder, Erica Badu, Warren Hill. Um, like, who's really going to really save these children? Like, generally, do we just going to just trust the church? Or are we just going to trust these institutions who have really damaged us? And then we become adults, right? And then we just send them to that same institution that effed us up. So generally, it's important that you examine. So he also says um, he don't care what happens to him. The vibrations that he make them is for the people. So generally, he's putting out frequencies and vibrations. So 
if you are not keen to those frequencies and vibrations, you're going to be lost because the kids dancing, what did the kids dancing mean? Well, when I seen the kids dancing, I thought about that meme that popped up around the time Black Panther came out when the kids was taught, was told, hey, y'all going to see Black Panther. And then you got all the kids busting out the latest dance moves. And, you know, that went real viral. But when was the last time you seen a spelling bee go viral? When was the last... I don't know. When was you? When was the last time you've seen some computations, you know, go viral? Why is it that when our children and in an institution for learning, you know, they just start breaking out and dancing and we just be like, you know, that's cute. Well, you know, I swear you don't see Chinese children like dancing in school like they really studying and really dealing with the world. And I'm the experiments that they're doing. I bet, I bet you they next level. I bet you they not doing the stanky leg, <laughs> you know, when they find out they go and watch the next great Chinese movie. Generally, entertainment is entertainment. But, you know, our people are so conditioned to feel like entertainment is the best thing that life has to offer. And I think, and I'm just postulating that Donald Glover was trying to speak to a world beyond what you perceive. But I'll talk about that, too. Um, the moment that disturbed a lot of people is when he shot the church choir. And so I think that spoke to post-traumatic sh stress disorder as in that, in, in the aspect that black people suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder from slavery, not because we've been through slavery, because we've been told about it. I've been told about slavery in my lifetime, like literally a million times. Now imagine me as a human being never told that I'm the descendant of a slave. Imagine me as a human being told that I'm actually the God of the earth. And it is my responsibility to cultivate the energies of the earth into, you know, physical manifestation. So generally when he shoots the church, he is really shooting that legacy or that lineage or that tradition that really has not served black people at all. And church is really the foundation of the spirit. Church is the spiritual component of slavery. So, you know, church as it stands with the choir and the preacher and all of that, that didn't start in indigenous society. That started in slavery. That was our spiritual component. So if the spiritual component of slavery is church, what would be the most important component to get rid of when you're trying to get rid of your slavery? Wouldn't the spiritual component be the most vital point that you want to get rid of? So when he's shooting the choir, I took it as him killing the church. I didn't think, you know, if it was the Charleston shooting, then it would have been nine choir members. In my opinion, it was 10 and, you know, people going to take with it from what they actually think that they're going to take from it and be satisfied. Like, Oh, he's reliving the Charleston shooting. Like, well, what does that serve to re-trigger that image or memory into your mind? It really doesn't serve you when you look at it from a deeper, more occult level. Cause when you look, when you look at the word gospel is really a nod to God's spell. And really that music presents a particular spell over you. Generally, there's a large percentage of people that's in church right now for no other reason than the music. So they not getting no spiritual help. They not getting no healing, no nothing. They're just there to, you know, every Sunday. Like when I was little, those choir sections would be for like 20 minutes. As I got older, those choirs was longer and longer and longer. Last time I went to church, I think like the, the choir sung for like a whole hour. And then the preacher spoke for 15 minutes. And guess what happened? The choir starts swinging again. So generally... The choir is very important to the church and really keeping it alive. Generally, if you get rid of the choir, you really get rid of the church. And so I think that's what he was really speaking to. Now, I may be right. I may be wrong. But what I'm saying is controvertible. 
In the end of the video, the very end of the video, you see him running towards the light. What is that a nod to? That is a nod to Plato's allegory of the cave. Because what's happening in this video, this video is very surreal. It's not... It's like it's like it's like he's having a vision of a, of of a reality, and then, like, he's like like he thinks he has a gun and he's shooting people, but then at the very end, he's like holding he he doesn't even have a gun, and then all the kids that was running around, all the anarchy, all the chaos, all the cops, all of the shit that's going on is disappearing, and he's just there like shit. Let me smoke a joint. And then he smokes a joint and then he smokes a joint. And then you see the person that he killed at the beginning, quote unquote, but he really didn't really kill. It was just him having like a psychotic vision or, a, you know, just just really like, you know, how you have dreams of like shooting people or something like that or you being shot, <laughs> but you don't really be shot. And then you'd be like, damn, I was tripping. And so after that realization, he's just like, you know, that realization is him realizing like shit i'm in the cave and i need to get up out of here so he dances on the car like that or whatever and then he just starts to run out of that cave so what is plato's cave talking about i'm gonna just read this straight off according to plato's allegory of the cave the way we perceive things around us and the way we lead our lives is not actually is actually not the truth we human beings are leading ignorant, incomplete lives following the paths, rules, norms, ethics set by previous generations without questioning them. So everybody's in the cave. They're looking at all of these shadows on the wall and they think that these shadows is real. And so, like I said at the beginning, Donald Glover is Plato. So Plato he's there like trying to wake people up and tell people about it, but Probably at first they're not really listening to him, but as soon as he start doing the stanky leg, start he start doing the shoe, now the nigga going viral. And you don't hear nothing that he's saying. <laughs> you don't like 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 do yourself a favor, go to genius.com and just look at the lyrics to that song. Now, he got better songs than this. Like, you know, a lot of people got better songs than this, but it wouldn't get where we at. May 9th right now, it's at 40 million views. I know a thousand of those views is from me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, so you have to really think about it. Like, he's trying to wake you up in the only way that a nigga could wake you up by doing that shoot dance, by doing a stanky leg and doing all these dances. Like, you okay, now that I got your attention, now peep the codes peep the signs peep the science like you think that money is going to save you he like you know what i'm saying grandma told me get your money black man get your money that's a mantra that's a spell like you know i'm programmed to this day like at this moment it's may 9 12 11 a.m part of me thinks that my life will be better <laughs> when i get buku money <laughs> but ultimately i have to understand that my truth and my happiness and my joy will happen whether i have a million dollars or two dollars you understand what i'm saying and i'm more leaning towards the two dollar side so we have to really understand that the most important things are us freeing ourselves from this matrix um so what happens at the end of plato's cave uh, Donald Glover, he's awakening the people. And then the people's like, you know, Donald Glover, Plato, shut the hell up. Or well, if you ain't gonna shut the hell up, we gonna kill you. So <laughs> he spends the rest of the, the, the story running out of the cave being chased by a mob of people. So when you look at the video, you see him running and behind him is like a mob of people like that's chasing after him like, you know you're not supposed to be waking up these people. You need to chill with that shit, bro. So, <laughs> like, that's what it's alluding to. That's my opinion. Um, you can see where he's running from is a dark place into the light. Because where he's at, there is no lights. And where he's running to, there are lights. And just like in Plato's cave, it's a point where he's ascending into sunlight away from the prisoners who want to keep him in that warehouse so it's important that you understand that america is a warehouse and if you don't understand that if you think that is all about 
building the best house in the world. <laughs> like that is crazy. Like to to understand that this is a plantation and to be like, okay, I'm on a plantation. Now the thing for me to do is to build the best house in this plantation and have the best car on this plantation. That's crazy. So it's important that you fully awaken yourself to your reality um, and all of that. And this is the last slide. Um, so this video is not about the murder of a man's body, but the murder and rebirth of man's spirit. I really think that's really true. Um, these are Anne Rain quotes. So this really, this lady is dope. Really look her up. A Y N slash R A N D. Just look up at look up her quotes, <laughs> her quotes, and just have you just like dumbfounded so i understand why he channeled aim rained and atlas shrugged because because like it's profound and i do not know how i connected atlas shrugged to this video so that's how i know i'll probably be the only one talking about it and people but like won't get it and i personally don't 100 percent get it but i'm like at 85 percent of understanding it so you know i watched the video a lot to fully get a full understanding as what he's trying to say and this is what i got so you think that money is the root of all evil? Have you ever asked what is the root of money? Money is just a tool of exchange, which can't, which can't exist unless there are goods produced and men able to produce them. Money is not the tool of moochers who claim your product by tears or the looters who take take it from you by force. Money is made possible only by the men who produce. So. If there was five hundred thousand dollars floating down the street and nobody picked it up, how much is that money worth? It's not worth anything. Money is only of value to you. So you set the tone for how important money is to you. Um, generally, there's things that you can do outside of money that can provide you great sustenance and great value. Now, do you have the ability to really tap into that energy? Well, the choice is up to you. You know, art is completely subjective. And so this is my subjective view of the art. Um, I want to just talk about some lyrics and then I'm out of here and whatever. So it's only two parts of the song that I like lyrically. The rest of the song lyrically is just like, I mean, you think 21 Savage and Lil Yachty and all these mumble rappers is bad. Like this is just... It's just horrible, you know what I'm saying? But it's probably the most popular song out right now. So it's really like amazing. But let's talk about some stuff that he says. He says, 100 bands, 100 bands, 100 bands. Contraband, contraband, contraband. I got the plug in the walker. They gonna find you like blocker. Like that part right there, I was like, okay, okay. He's speaking to, he's speaking to some real stuff right there. So 100 bands, 100 bands, 100 bands, right? You think that life is all about money, 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 money. But really, Contraband, contraband, contraband. So what is contraband? We talked about contraband earlier, but let's expound on the contraband thing. Let's talk about contraband camps. <laughs> contraband camps were where former slaves, free slaves were because you couldn't hold them. So all runaway slaves, anybody who ran away from the plantation was now considered contraband. So him saying contraband, contraband, contraband is him saying I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And so where do you get that freedom from? He says, I got to plug in Oaxaca. So where is Oaxaca? Oaxaca is in Mexico, the land of the Omex. Um, Oaxaca is known as a free and sovereign state. And the thing that makes Oaxaca the most, what what makes Oaxaca Oaxaca is that the, the population there does not speak Spanish. <laughs> when you go throughout Mexico, it's been almost completely colonized by Spanish and Europeans. But in that plot part of, and I'm, I'm sure there's many different parts in Mexico, Central, South America, where it have not been, you know, colonized, quote unquote. But generally, Oaxaca is where is the valley of the Valley of Oaxaca or something. Just do your research on, on Oaxaca and the Omex and all of that. That's your real history. So he's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a slave. I'm contraband. Like, 
where is you contraband from? Like, I got the plug in Owaka. Like, and when my ancestors find you, they gonna find you like Blocka. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have no fear. I have no worries. Like, I am completely com protected in this land, in this country. But, you know, America as a concept, America as an idea, that has to be completely demolished and destroyed. And we have to really kind of rediscover our connection of the whole continent from the tip of South America all the way up into Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Like this little section that they call the United States of America is our warehouse. But the whole America is where we really need to get really, we need to really rediscover. Um, so yeah. And just, back to that part where he's talking about the warehouse receipts at the very end of the video you gotta listen real close but he got young thug in there like you're just a black man you just a barcode like what like you just a barcode he said he say he say you just a you just a black man in this world you just a barcode and if you don't know about you know if you're not into it you just probably just gonna be like Still doing your stanky legs, still doing your shoot dance. Like, no, you really just a barcode. You really just a warehouse receipt. You really just to keep tabs on the government paying back its national debt to England. But you think that it's all about driving cars and things of that nature and living the best life that you possibly can. And it may be that for you now. I could be completely wrong with this video, but I highly doubt that I'm not. I really think that I'm on point, but generally I do need to deal with any type of conflicts or anything that you've seen that didn't agree with what I said. Or if you gain some information from this video that you can kind of do your own research on. And generally I know there's a lot of parents that send their children to public school um, but you really should think about that. Are you doing the best thing for your child? Was public school the best thing for you? Or was there a better alternative for you? And you should really do your research and do the best thing. Because generally, we all say that we love our children. And we're trying to protect our children. And we want the best for our children. But we'll wake up our children at 6 o'clock in the morning. And be like, you better get your ass to school. Because I got to, you know what I'm saying? So, and be so happy when they get to, <laughs> like... Damn, now I can relax. So generally, let's think about it. Let's talk about it, man. Oh, I got one more slide. I thought I was done. I got one more slide. So um, it was a part where it's like, behold the pale horse and things of that nature. And, you know, there is a literal interpretation of that, that, you know, I'm sure you can go on YouTube or Google and find like, literally thousands of interpretations of what the pale horse really means. But I'm going to quote Zachary Lansdowne from the revelation of St. John. Um, he actually breaks down the revolu revelations or the book of apocalypse in a psychological terms and takes away the literal meaning. And so this particular verse, let me just read to you his breakdown. And really in a nutshell, shell, it is encapsulating what this video is about. So let's break it down. The spirit looks at and puts away his corrupt and deluded thinking, thereby restoring his very innocence. He has power over his mind, which is the highest part of his fourfold personality and can purify it in four ways. One, by having insights that dispel false beliefs. Two, by refusing to express certain lines of thinking. Three, by refuting false beliefs and prejudices through logical arguments. Four, by engaging other parts of the personality in altruistic services. So generally, what are you doing to give back? Or are you just be like, oh, it's just problems out in the world and the world's so crazy. But what are you doing to make the world better? And if you're not doing anything to make the world better, then guess what? You're the problem. So generally, there is a multitude of constituents who are not doing shit to improve the world. They are just simply sending their child to school. They're working and they're trying to live the best life that they possibly can. And at the same time, all types of stuff is going on. 
In this video, they talk about gun violence, which one in 300 people are said to die by gun violence, but one in six people will die from heart disease. One in seven will die from cancer. So generally, if we don't take care of our health, then who gives a shit about a gun? You understand you're more likely to die from, but generally you're going to die from something anyway. So, I mean, it's just a discussion, something to kind of open up your mind. Um, really did this for fun. Um, but if you're interested in any types of readings or anything of that sort, um, be sure to check out the site www.hoodmystic.com. If you want to tell me how wrong I am, you can contact me at hoodmystic at gmail.com. Um, or if you just want to say, Hey, or whatever the case may be, um, the PayPal is paypal.me backslash the hood mystic. If you want to donate to my channel, um, the Patreon page, if you want to like get monthly readings for just a dollar a month, you know what I'm saying? You can hit me up at patreon.com backslash hood mystic. You know, it's a lot of things going on. Um, if you're interested in the reviews or you don't trust me, you think my readings are trash and I'm just out here scamming, then, you know, check out the reviews. I got a, got some people that I gave readings to. They'll tell you how it is. You know what I'm saying? I want you to be really comfortable about getting your reading. I don't want you to be afraid. But, you know, that's just me, man. The Hood Mystic. This is my interpretation of Donald Glover. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Got something from it. Hope it wasn't too boring. Um, But... Otherwise, that's what it is in a nutshell. And y'all have a wonderful evening, day, whatever, wherever this video finds you. Just make sure that whatever happened is good, man. I'm the Hood Mystic, and I'm signing out. Peace.